Last time on Super, with the android borrowing Piccolo's abilities, his advanced strength put Piccolo on the back foot, but Gohan showed up to put the power copy in 7-3 in his place. Now with a fully charged Kamehameha aimed right at him, and 7-3's time using Piccolo's abilities burned out, we join our story. Gohan vs. 7-3 With Gohan having 7-3 dead to rights, Krillin worries if he shoots it from there, the Earth will be done for. But Piccolo knows better. Gohan is no fool. He will detonate it right at the surface. Ah! 7-3! Use what you've got in stock! Stop! Blast clearly hitting the android, but nothing really happening. Where's the boom? It just kind of went from point A to point B. Horrified Piccolo gasps. He, he ate it. <sighs> he literally ate the key blast. As Jocko uses his incredible eyesight to see, he swapped to Moro on his forehead. He had Moro's powers in stock! As Piccolo shouts, in stock! He never said anything about that! And well, he can switch to other copied abilities, storing up to three identities at a time. Krillin asking, what now? Jocko trembles, this is bad. He's going to absorb energy! They need to take him down before he can! Putting up the same fire barrier as Moro. Our heroes can't get close. The goons chortle, that was a close one. They never thought they'd have to use their secret weapon so soon. Speaking with HQ, Shimureka informs their boss of what just happened. At which, Sagambo questions. Is that so? Finish up there quick and get back here. Listening in. Moro wants to confirm that they already had to make use of his copied abilities. Regrettably, his underling explains that they were supposed to be used as a last resort. Grabbing the back of his neck, the wizard doesn't like getting touched all the time. In the future, he doesn't want 7-3 employing his powers for just anything. With that understood, he assumes it's at least being put to good use. And actually, they can check it out from here. He gets on the walkie and instructs Shimreka to switch to monitor mode. Before directing the machine man, quo, solely heck look at all those vowels. Coiter? To project the live feed here. Even Gohan is heavily feeling the effects of the power drain. The gang can only now try to figure out how it came to this. Joining the ditto. He's told not to absorb the planet's energy. That's on Lord Moro's menu. 7-3 assures he's only targeting the four warriors below. Looking in on something I think us old folks saw from the Power Rangers. Moro wants to clarify if what they're doing has a time limit as well. Which of course it does. They will have to end this quickly. Taking this in, it does come to a surprise to Sagambo that Earth is home to beings stronger than his guys. But Earth? Thinking, Moro remembers 10 million years ago was a planet of mere monkeys. They evolved quite a bit since then. <laughs> the bandits now easily able to beat down the protectors of our world. Shimmy sneers. Too bad for you, being stronger doesn't always net you the win. <laughs> Don't get too cocky. Piccolo remains resolute that even if they die today, Goku and Vegeta will make sure they go down. 
But Goku and Vegeta? Who are they? Ever the informative. 7-3 reminds, those are the Saiyans who were on Namek. <laughs> After this registers with Little Green. He queries, what about him? Obviously not seeing them as a threat given how things went down. Krillin hollers that right now they're training to beat you punks. You won't get your way, you know. And training. The bandit finds this interesting. He beckons Moro if he heard that. Goku and Vegeta, the Galactic Patrol members on Namek. Sagambo reasons if they let them run free, it could come back to bite them. Why not just go and eat Earth first? Without waiting for a response from his master, he heads over to the control panel to command the pilot pull everyone back from this planet. They're taking off. When Moro tells him to wait, he utters, Those two are supposedly training. His first in command responding, Right. I thought they just turned tail for good back then, but they've still got some fight left in them. Who knew? Gazing down at the battle, which means they will deliver me far greater energy if only I wait a spell. For now, tell those three to retreat from Earth. Once the ones called Goku and Vegeta return with more energy than ever, I shall consume them and their precious Earth. The Galactic Patrol no longer poses a threat, so we need not remain hidden from them. Sagambo obeys without objection. Asking if they heard that down there, the bandits stopped their assault. Shimereka calls over to the others to inform them they've been ordered off this rocket back to the main force. Yumba asking why. He tells simply enough they're gonna do this job later after those Saiyans show up. 7-3 uttering their names. Son Goku and Vegeta. Shimereka smiles. Yeah, those two. The gang regroups while Zanti and these people got away easy. Krillin wants to know the meaning of this. What's going on? He's told Moro's gonna come and gobble up those Saiyans himself. Confirming the big boss is coming here. The convict howls. Yep, then you fools and this planet are done for. Better tell your Saiyan pals to get back here, okay? We'll be back in Galactic Cycle 750. Don't even think of running. Since that doesn't mean much to the Earthlings, Krillin glances over to Jocko wanting to know how long that gives him, which is about 20 days. The patrolman fearfully warns that they'll never make it back by Cycle 7. This planet's tech is totally primitive, so it's gonna take time. They gotta wait until at least Cycle 8. Is this a ploy by Jocko to buy some more time, or is he merely being honest? Annoyed. Shimareka will have to let Moro know. Much to the relief of Jocko. Switching back to the abilities of the Porcupine Men. Later. The trio open a portal and leave just as abruptly as they arrived. Krillin mumbles. We're safe for now, I think. When the painful coughing of Gohan gets his attention, asking if he's okay. Your Saiyan is sorry he let him get away. His longtime buddy pushes him not to sweat it. They would have really been in trouble without him here. He implores him to take it easy. Dende can patch him up right now, or Senzu. Still with his mind on the matter at hand, Piccolo questions Jaco when they are actually returning. Deadpan, he responds. In two months. To the delight of our heroes, he brought him an extra month and then some. Nice going. However, the spaceman reasons. I mean, I can't go dying before that one anime movie comes out next month. Which, ironically, the only movie of note that came out one month after this chapter's official release was My Hero Academia Heroes Rising. When Boma makes her timely arrival, soaring in overhead on her aircraft. And so, 
Earth was safe from danger for the time being. However, the countdown began for this grave threat's next visit. News of Moro's impending trip to Earth reached Maris via Galactic Patrol HQ, who promises the two of them will travel to Earth in two months' time. Informing Goku that Moro's pal showed up on Earth mid-meal. Maris reveals, It seems all is well, though. Thank goodness Agent Jocko is there for them. In response, Gotcha! But they said the bad guys are gonna come back? Which is the case. Two months. That's more time than we thought, huh? It gives us six months in here. I feel sorry for the planets that will be sacrificed in the meantime, but assuring Moro's capture when the time comes is our top priority. Scooting a seat back, Goku knows that means his training's gotta pay off. Or else. Now that his belly's full, he wants to get right back to it. His mentor puts his gloves back on in agreement. Heading back out into the endless void, Goku just realized that he's never seen Maris eat. Doesn't he ever get hungry? Who tells he can eat or not eat? It's all the same to him. Which our hero finds strange. We said the same thing. Stretching, Goku figures if it's all the same, maybe he won't eat either. The food here is kind of meh. Speak the angel's name and he shall appear. The Universe 7 angel finds himself at Zeno's palace, but what's he doing here? A set of feet hovering into view, a voice apologizes for making him wait. The Grand Priest. He questions how he can help Weiss today, meaning Weiss was the one who called for this meeting. He bows and also offers an apology for a sudden request. I presume you are aware that our universe is once again in discord. The GP replies, It seems that way. Universe 7 certainly is a restless one. Whis admits he's deeply ashamed for it. Wanting his child to be more direct, that a Shinkan queries what business they have. He doesn't suppose he intends to ask his universe to be saved. However, Whis would never. The angels must maintain neutrality, siding with neither good or evil. His opposite beckons what else he would ask of him then. And there's something he wishes to confirm concerning their angel ways. The father of angel states, the matter of Miris, I suppose. Weiss is surprised to see he's already aware. Given his appearance, abilities, and noteworthiness among even the highest of angels, does this confirm why Miris has been such a mystery since his introduction? Is he really an angel breaking the divine laws of neutrality? Or does this mystery get much deeper? And there are still many things we don't know.